Today, the fourth Sunday of Lent, we keep as Mothering Sunday. Not Mother's Day, as the commercial world around us would have us believe, but Mothering Sunday. And I think that's an important thing to stress, to give it its proper title. Because Mothering Sunday is part of our British history and tradition. Whereas Mother's Day is something imported from the US. My poor children used to have to scour the shops to find a card that said Mothering Sunday instead of Mother's Day so they wouldn't incur their father's wrath. <laughs> and it's probably harder to find one now than it was then. Not that I've got anything against America, if you understand. My daughter and son-in-law used to live there. I've visited many times. I have many friends and acquaintances who are Americans. And my own granddaughter was born there and enjoys American citizenship as well as being a UK national. I don't object to Americans, but I do object to Mother's Day, which incidentally, in any case, the Americans celebrate on the second Sunday of May. <laughs> Nothing to do with the fourth Sunday of May. But I object because the history and origins of Mothering Sunday are very important. It goes back to a time when many people, especially girls, were employed in service mostly as domestics, as maids of one sort or another. Can you imagine girls as young as ten were sent out to work? The work was very arduous, the hours were very long, and there was very little time off. In fact, for very many, the only two days a year they got off were Boxing Day and Mothering Sunday. Mothering Sunday was the day when people returned to their mother's church, their mother church. This would be the parish where they grew up, where their families would still live. So it also became a family occasion and a celebration. Of course, in those days, you couldn't give off to Clinton's or W.H. Smith to buy a card. So they would make cards for their mothers. And on the way home, they would often pick flowers from the hedgerows as a small gift for their mothers. Mothering Sunday is sort of halfway through Lent, so it's also known as Refreshment Sunday. On this day, all our Lenten disciplines can be relaxed. So if you've given up something for Lent this year, well, you can indulge yourself today, but only for today. With its unique place in both our religious and our historical traditions, Mothering Sunday is, I think, something we should treasure and retain. But of course, we can't stop the rest of the society celebrating Mother's Day, nor can we stand against the weight and power of commercialisation. So despite my protestations, I guess Mother's Day is here to say this day. But whatever we call it, it is a celebration of motherhood, an opportunity to reflect upon and be thankful for our mothers. I suppose one of the important messages you learn when you become a parent is you never become a perfect one. When we look to our own mothers, we see not perfection, but we do see love. They did provide, they did protect, and they did do their best, if not perfectly. Mothers can also be on occasion with quite funny people. My own mother, who sadly died 38 years ago, when I was 38, she was five feet nothing tall, but was a fearless woman. She was ready to stand up for what she believed in and to fight her corner. But she used to say the funniest of things. She used to say, one of these days I'll swing for you, my lad. She said this long after hanging with being a boy. <laughs> or faced with some fact or statement or situation she thought was ridiculous, she would say, it's all my eye and Betty Marty. Now I've researched that saying, it's all my eye is a well-known saying, but no one's quite sure who Betty Marty was or where she came from, but it didn't stop my mom saying it. And like many of her generations, I suspect, my mom was at the spare the rods for the child variety. She clearly believed that good shot slap was the best way to discipline a child. And when we come to raising our own children, we either do it in one of two ways, I think. Either we more or less repeat the upbringing we have, or we do the opposite. Or 
my children were growing up, I never ever hit either of them. My mom was a prude. But guess what? They both grow up to be reasonable, balanced human beings. But however perfect or imperfect our mothers were or are, they're probably the person who's had the greatest influence on our lives and our development as people. We learn so much from our mothers, what they wanted us to learn as well as what they didn't. <coughs> and that shapes so much of what we are. As I look back all those years ago to my own mother, I am filled with gratitude and with good memories and with the love we shared together. Whether our mothers are still with us or are they long departed, we can still use today mothering somebody to be thankful for them, to be grateful for them and to remember them. One of the most staggering things I think about God, if you think about it, is that God entrusted the nurturing and care of his one and only son to a young girl in Israel. She was the one who would play a major part in Jesus' life as he grew into adulthood. Elsewhere in Luke's Gospel, he tells of the occasion when Jesus went with his parents to the temple in Jerusalem when he was 12 years old for the Passover. After the Passover is over, Mary and Joseph travel a day, but then can't find Jesus anywhere, thinking he was with friends. So they return to Jerusalem, and there he is, debating in the temple with the teachers. Although Jesus tells them they should have known he'd be in his father's house, the most telling thing about the incident comes at the end. We read, then he went with them to Nazareth, and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in our hearts. In John's Gospel, we're reminded of that most poignant and moving of incidents as Jesus hangs on the cross. How hard it must have been for Mary to watch her son suffering one of the cruelest deaths ever devised. What pain she must have felt. How hard it was to see him hanging there and knowing there was nothing she could do to help him. She was powerless. And how hard it must have been for Jesus, looking down at his mother and witnessing all the pain and grief that she was going through. And seeing her situation, we read, when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside him, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. <coughs> One of his last acts before he died was for Jesus to make sure his mother would be cared for and provided for. So on this morning Sunday, let's be grateful for our mothers. Let's remember them and be thankful for them. And let's remember and give thanks to for Mary, the mother of Jesus, for her care and love for him.